And we're live. So today we want to talk about nuclear proliferation. Um, obviously a topic that a lot of people think about on a pretty regular basis, uh, dating back to the Cold War. And I, I think we might be in a second Cold War now. So <clears throat> pretty excited that we have uh, one of my best friends um, as a guest today, who is an engineer, world traveler, incredibly smart man. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, Blaine DeLuca. My name is Stu Hawk, and this is my podcast about all the weird, crazy, spooky things that scare me and my guests, and the one thing that helps us forget all about them. Ladies and gentlemen, beer freaks. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, here I am. Thanks for having me, Stu. Um, you stroked my ego a little too strong there, I think, so hopefully Stroke I can... a lot of things too strong. Yeah, well, we know that. But, um, so what, what are we doing? Are we starting with a beer or get right into this or what? Well, so why don't, why don't we start with what you want to talk about today? Because the whole program that we, we have here is based around the things that we're afraid of. Whether that's horror, sci-fi, real life news events. Uh, I guess the reason I came upon this topic, so my first internship, I worked for a nuclear power plant consulting firm. Um, sounded like it was going to be cool, but basically I never did any work. So, and, and like every single page on the internet was blocked and mind you, this was what, 2008. Uh, so not quite as much excitement on the internet. So basically I read everything Wikipedia had to offer about nuclear power or any derivative of nuclear fusion, fission, you name it. Um, so it highlighted a couple of unnerving things and now with some of the stuff in the news, particularly this week with, uh, Russia and their apparent doomsday missile that they had a mishap with today, uh, I thought, thought it might be a good one to talk about. Always, always a good one to talk about because, um, who's not terrified of nuclear energy? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like we won't get into the backstory of Chernobyl, but <laughs> if you can imagine just building a nuclear reactor, reactor like in your shed in the backyard, that's more or less what happened there. So you've got like other failures that happened like in um, in Pennsylvania or Japan, and you had all these redundant backup systems that you know did did their jobs. That didn't happen in Chernobyl because it was literally a reactor in a shed, and something went wrong, and that was a wrap. Well, so you heard it here first, folks. Don't <laughs> build a nuclear reactor in your backyard uh, because it'll be Chernobyl. Uh, okay, so so the topic that we're going to talk about today is nuclear proliferation, and I think there's some news that, that Blaine's going to bring up. But before we get into to that shit, um, we're going to tell you what we're drinking um, because that's really the, the crucial part of having great conversations, in my opinion, is the ability to uh, crack a beer or wine if you're, if you're you know, into nah. that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's fine. Um, that's not what this show is about. This show is about beer. So we're gonna have um, a couple of beers that Blaine brought by. And so thank you, first of all, for, for bringing these over. Um, so the first one we're gonna have is uh, a local Las Vegas beer, uh, which I love. So I, I've had it before, big fan of it. i give you a little bit of a description. I know Blaine's kind of a pussy, so... Yeah. Um, you, you see the bombs on the top of the can? Like, how appropriate could this possibly be? <laughs> well done. Cheers, friend. Yeah, cheers, man. Cheers. All right, so, so this is a, um, again, this is a locally brewed beer out of Henderson. 5.4% uh, uh, alcohol by volume. Um, it is it is an IPA, but I'll tell you my first sip and my first thought... Um, because I drink a lot of beer, so I, I couldn't remember exactly how this one tasted. But it is not mega hoppy. Like, what do you think? What, what's supposed to be the difference between an IPA and an APA, I guess? Well, this is, <laughs> I'm pretty sure, and don't quote me on this, because I, well, I'm on fucking record right now, apparently. But, but like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's like Freedom Fries versus French Fries. I don't think there's any fucking difference. Um, there's probably like a million, like people out there who would say 
what the fuck are you talking about? You're absolutely wrong. They brew, brew with different hops or yeah. different. I'm, I'm not even going to pretend to know because I, I definitely do not. But do you, do you know the reason it's called an India Pale Ale is because of the ingredients that are used in the beer. And so when these ships like went from you know London all the way to you know these these cities in in India, they had to, they wanted beer. I mean, fuck, we all want beer. But they had to make sure that it lasted. I think it was like six months or something like that. And beer at that time did not last like that long. So if you wanted your beer to actually, you know, you had to have, uh, I, think, I think it's the hops. I think, I think the hops were the ones that allowed you to do it. So while some people may not really appreciate that super grassy flavor uh, that you get with an IPA, that's the reason for it is that it lasts longer. And now, basically, every bro on the West Coast just loves IPAs. <laughs> so they don't give a fuck how long it lasts, as long as it tastes uh, mega hoppy. And, by the way, I, I think like IPAs have gotten way too fucking hoppy lately. So that's I actually really appreciate this Citra Rye by Joseph James. It's not crazy hoppy. like It's, it's a little fruity. It, I think all these guys are going to have to start going to... Uh these more citrusy beers because you've got all the uh, the bros you just called them are switching over to what are those the white claws fucking ain't no laws when you're drinking claws man the new four loco is that what they're calling it anyway I don't drink them because <laughs> I, I don't drink them but mark, mark my words a year watch how many more fruity flavors are in all these beers by because the way, of damn white claws by the way I got some white claws in the fridge I bet you do when we finish this podcast moving on I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a moving on alright all right, so now you know what we're drinking. We're having some some Joseph James to try. If you want to, you know, enjoy along, go pick pick some up. Probably only if you're local. I don't think it gets distributed very far. But um, anyway, great beer. Uh, not not mega hoppy, just the right amount. We saw something in the news this week that sort of spiked your interest again in something that you were already pretty interested in. Yeah, and and I actually just saw the article today. So there's still a lot of. Uh, uncertainty about what's going on but um some spike in radiation levels somewhere over norwegian waters or somewhere between norway and russia i'm not really sure uh but the thought is it was some kind of failed test on this uh what seems to be a ballistic missile with uh any range uh that that's kind of the claim um I don't know if I should say it's the claim, but that, that's what's at least being thought of by everyone. And so you've got this uh, contained uh, nuclear explosion within the, or potential nu- nuclear explosion within this ballistic missile. And who in the world knows what happens? But uh, tons of speculation right now. Um, Putin hasn't said one way or another uh, from what I've read up on from his representatives. They won't claim anything, which makes you think there's that much more secrecy because. Um, there are statements said that it, none of our defensive missiles could stop it. There's nothing, anything within the U.S. military could do to stop it. And that's on top of lots of claims that Russia and China, for that matter, too, have uh, vastly superior fighter jets compared to the U.S., our whole F-35 program, which is a whole other discussion. It is a pretty badass plane, though. It's a badass plane, but... I mean, modern problems require modern technology, right? So, like, so, okay, so you just said a lot. <laughs> I mean, but, but yes, yeah, so I heard, I heard them talking about it this week. Like, you made the claim that they have nuclear missiles, like missiles that carry nuclear warheads that travel so Which, that, that's nothing new, but the big claim here is that it's basically unlimited range. You could go anywhere in the world. But... But that, but that was also new, though, that there was no way for us to shoot it down. It's so fast that there's no way for us to shoot it down. Is that right? I don't know if it's so fast or it, the navigation systems, the, the anti-missile systems it has with it. I have no idea. And I don't think anybody in the public eye really does just yet. Like, if you announce something like that, you just got to wonder, like, is it, is it boasting? Is it, rea- is it reality? Or are we just back in the fucking Cold War again where we're just making claims? Like, we're just, like, cause Don, like, let's be honest. Donald Trump could say the same shit tomorrow, right? He could say, I have a laser on the moon. Like, let's go back to the Reagan days. 
I have a laser on the moon that could shoot it down. <laughs> or I have a laser on the moon that could burn down Moscow tomorrow. Like, you, you, you could say those kinds of things because today no one knows what's true and what's false anymore. But so so much of the technology is at our fingertips, though. You can, you can get on YouTube right now and look up, like, multiple people that have built functioning nuclear reactors in their backyard. Led to uh, some... You just had this conversation, Delane. You're... Like, I think one of the things that Chernobyl brought to life, at least <clears throat> for me, if you're going to fucking die from a nuclear bomb, you want to be in that initial blast. Because if you're not, but you're in that radius... It's a long, awful death. It's fucking off. Like, you're just burning from the inside out. Like, this radiation is just fucking... It's, it's like... You probably know about this better than I. Like, is it is it just vibrating your fucking insides, the energy of your insides, so rapidly that like you're you're just dying? It's not not a bad description. You just, you just have like constantly mutating cells. Okay, uh, we're gonna pause for a second um, because we need to look for our next beer and make sure that audio is recording. Okay, be right back, folks. And we're back. And it's it's it damn well is time for another beer. And <clears throat> first of all, I, I just, you know, um, want to say well done with uh, the peach beer that you got. I'm curious, man, because I, I, I don't know if my uh, country accent's come across. I've kind of lost it over the years, but I grew up in Georgia, the peach state. So I know we were supposed to take local beers, but... I didn't even look to see where this one was from. I just saw peach and figured we'd have to give it a try. Well, so, so here, here's the cool thing is this this beer is actually not far. Mm. It's, a, it's a Phoenix beer. Um, mm. So it's it's four peaks, peach, gold nail. Um, and normally I'd give you shit for getting fruit beer, but I did talk about earlier the fact that I do get uh, white claws. So uh, I guess I, I don't have much of a... We're going to fix that. Anyway, cheers to this. Weird. Interesting. I don't hate it. I don't love it. <laughs> We're somewhere in between. And the yin and the yang have spoken. Crisp, vibrant, peachy. Yeah. I love the I, I, I love some of the shit that they put on the like who established nineteen ninety six. Like I was I was already a young kid. Like that's not even an old company. Yeah. I, I had my first uh, four peaks in nineteen ninety six. I was uh, ten years old. I'm just kidding. No. Is, so, 1996 was the Atlanta Olympics. I overheated watching pole vaulting and had to go to the... Were you there? Yeah. Were you, you were actually at the Olympics? We were watching track and field. I overheated. Mom went with me to the like Olympic stadium emergency room, and I was there for like six hours. No shit. Yeah. I was, it, was, it was a bad situation. Is that right? But she missed some world records. She probably should have just left me there. That was in good hands. <laughs> Wasn't that the one uh, with Michael Johnson? Yeah. That was that was the one where he broke like the 200 meter and the 400 meter or something like that. And, and like every other record there Basically was. Basically the fastest yeah. man of all time. It's, well, until... Until Usain Bolt. That guy. And now no one gives a fuck about anyone behind him. Yeah. All right. So I would say... Um, anyway, l- let me just say Four Peaks is a great brewery uh, out of Phoenix. I went to school... Uh, for my undergrad in Flagstaff at uh, Northern Arizona University. Uh, And not a lot of people have ever been to Flagstaff or even know about it, but uh, (laughs) what you should just know is it's about two hours away from Phoenix. So we spent a lot of time in Phoenix. And this brewery is actually really cool. Um, And it's just outside of like, I think it's it's almost on the ASU campus. Um, Because anytime I would go down there, all the ASU guys would be like, "Ah, let's go, let's go to Four Peaks. Let's go to Four Peaks, bro. Jeez. And I'd be like, "Fuck yeah!" <laughs> I mean, I was like, I was like twenty one. Like, yeah, fuck. Well, yeah, yeah let's go like, to fucking Four Peaks. Like, yeah, the inside of your cap says two. Mine says ten. You reckon that's what machine it is? Wait, mine said ten. Mine's ten. Yours is two. So I wonder if that's like the capping machine that it went through for traceability. I think it's basically saying like golf score scoring. I am a two, and you're a ten. 
So like, I am way better than you is basically what it's saying. If you're okay with that. Based on the, uh, what, six years I spent working in a factory, you're probably right. <laughs> uh, absolutely not. No, like the, the couple of years we worked together, how many times you probably fucking put me in my place in meetings without me even knowing? It was, it was well worth it. Well. Yeah, it was so. I, I wouldn't even have known. I'd be like, yeah, yeah, Blaine, you're right. And everyone else in the room's like, yeah, Stu, you're a dipshit. Blaine just basically said you were fucking wrong. They all knew. Yeah, they all knew. That's all right. We're here now. We're fine. And I don't work there anymore. So and, and, and now so we can pretend like it doesn't even matter. No, we, actually, it worked pretty well, the dynamic, I think, because. There was like there was always this tension. I think there was always a bit of a tension between like factory and like the business side. And so like having the two of us working together pretty closely and being friends, it I, th- I think it helped. It's good that we were friends. Otherwise, I would have probably like never cooperated. You would have hated me if we weren't friends. Yeah. Because I was the guy who was like, "What if we did this?" And from the factory side, you're like, "What if you shut the fuck up?" <laughs> <laughs> By the way, we're talking about a chocolate factory, <laughs> a chocolate business. Yes, we'll we'll, we'll get to that eventually. Uh, <laughs> Blaine is not going to be like a one-time guest. I'm pretty sure he's going to be like here relatively often. Basically, every time I uh, Blaine comes over to drink, I think I'm just going to force him to do a podcast. Fair enough. I'm going to be hanging out, sleeping yeah. on the couch, and having watching cartoons with Jackson in the morning anyway. Which the only variable, like the only thing that's changing in this whole scenario is now we're just doing a podcast with it. Because that happened all the time anyway. I'm ready for Jackson to get like another year under his belt because then we can have the Nerf Gun podcast. Yeah. Well. Amanda's not going to like me quite as much at that point, but. Amanda already is kind of mad at you anyway. I'm going to stack that kid up with some Nerf Guns. (laughs) Amanda's already frustrated with you, but. All right. We taught we bullshitted enough. This beer, uh, Four Peaks, you've done better. We we we've seen better from you. Um, I'm not gonna put this up there. But the the fruit revolution I mentioned earlier, we'll we'll, we'll revisit this in a year. Yeah. What 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 is what is this um, the percentage here? Do you see uh, an ABV? I mean, if it's like if it's like nine percent, it's like shit. Okay. Yeah, it's not. It's four and a half. No. Oh, fuck yeah. No. All right. Four Peaks. Meh. Uh, maybe for chicks. Chicks, chicks might like this. Moving on. All right. So back to <laughs> the fucking topic. This is this is the. By the way, this is the intention of this podcast. I want us to get fucking diverted and drink, and then sort of slowly come back to like, holy shit, what are the things that are gonna kill us soon? Because um, that's basically what life is. To be fair, all we are is sitting here thinking like. Mm, I'm gonna live maybe another year maybe another 10 years maybe another 50 years I don't know but I'm gonna divert your life though I'm gonna don't, di- divert it don't, don't assume you're gonna get a uh, full pool hmm no life yeah, is a lot better that way do you know like the the, the what was the, the average age the life expectancy back in like the the medieval era and I think this is what people get wrong the average age of people in the medieval era was like 23 years old. Damn. So like people think that like you were 30 and like, okay, you're getting up there in age, buddy. But no, so, so this is what I learned recently. Is it a high mortality rate? It's a high fucking mortality oh, rate. That's exactly right. So like, so people still lived to be 60, 70, 80 years old. I mean, it was less frequent than what we have today. But, like, everyone thinks, like, oh, no, everyone just died early. No, no. People still lived to be, like, pretty old. But there was just a really good chance you were going to die at birth or, like, when you were three years old from some crazy fucking weird virus. Most likely just the flu. You were just going to die from the flu. Um, What's crazy, though, is there's still, like, there's quite a few countries around the planet where the life expectancy is still under 40. And, again, it goes back to that infant mortality rate. Is it just the infant mortality rate? More, more than anything else, but like... Like it, that's where mean and median come in, right? Like, so what's the median? I have no idea. What, but what's also interesting is looking at the, uh, the age of the mother at the time of her firstborn mm. and looking how young that is. So mm. like these countries with an average age of 
or average life expectancy of 35, 40 years, uh, these women are having their first child at 16, 17, 18 years old on average. That's, that's wild. Yeah. But it's all in preparation for one, if not multiple children dying. Jesus Christ. Christ. <laughs> Good Lord. It's, you know, it's a whole other fucking path. We got to talk about nuclear prolifer- <laughs> proliferation. Yeah. Uh, or some taste. However you, you can fucking pronounce it. Um, yeah. So like, like classical, that seems weird to say, classical nuclear proliferation was like the nuclear technology expanding into all these other powers that weren't like the initial powerhouses that created it. Mm-hmm. You know, like Russia, um, I guess I should say Germany. Who was it? Warner von Braun, the crazy like... Well, that was the guy who became the fucking head of NASA. Of Winning America. The US. Yes. And that was post war? That too? whole paperclip project or whatever it was. Yeah. Where we, no one likes to talk about it, but we stole a bunch of Nazis. And that's what basically built our fucking new, our NASA program. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's <laughs> but like, but nuclear proliferation in its classical, like, definition more or less started coming to an end after like the cold war and like all these post world war ii um post cold war i i, I don't know modern, modern day like all these uh global trees is that the right the, I, I think everyone came to terms like all the major nuclear powers said that they were going to reduce their nuclear stockpile i think that was sort of the expectation yeah, which we basically realized like we have tens of thousands of these around the globe, most of them situated within the US and, and Russia. Yeah. It's those two. We, we had mean, by those... far more. Sure, yes. It, it was just some god awful number. But... However, I think, I think that all of the studies said like they probably had the bigger ones. I don't know. I, I don't know that, and I don't know if it matters. Like, honestly, like if it's 10% bigger, it doesn't fucking matter. We're all dead. Doesn't matter. Two of them, the plan is done. Right. It doesn't fucking matter. By the way, have you ever heard of, like, cold hand? No. Okay, so, like, this was one of the most terrifying things I've ever heard. This was something that I, I, I have no idea whether or not it's true. I've seen a lot of internet articles about it, but it's basically, I think it's called cold hand or dead hand in Russia, where, like, during the Cold War, Russia basically built an automated response. So if Moscow or any of their major military outposts within Russia or Siberia ever went down, it would trigger like something like 30 nuclear warheads sent to America and to America's allies. Whoa. So basically like... Was this a Cold War thing? It was a Cold War thing. It was a fucking... So like, so if some, you know, terrorist from the Middle East or Africa or Europe wanted to basically just say fuck the world they could literally if if they found a way to like blast one of these spots they could do it and the craziest part is from what i understand the fall of the soviet union happened so fast that they don't know that they have actually turned off cold hand or dead hand or whatever it's called the fully well, that's terrifying. So, like, if anything ever happened, it would just trigger, like, these fucking nuclear warheads being sent all around the world, and we would just all be dead. Like, 30 warheads, Earth is done. Earth is just no, done. It, it don't take that many. Like, right. I mean, at two of them, they're going to kill, you know, tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions, depending on where they hit in that immediate blast radius. But then, as soon as all that radioactive uh, isotopes get, get up into the atmosphere... We're all done. Like it, it's not. Gonna, they're so powerful now compared to what they were 50 years ago. Much like marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> From what I hear, anyway. Yes. I'm. I'm, I'm not a. <laughs> I'm not a connoisseur. I just. I would like to be. I would. I would. Mu- I would very much like to be a connoisseur of marijuana. Well, uh, we'll, we'll see if. Uh, I mean, it's legal in the state. I give it five years. Five years will be federal. I, I'm. I'm. I'm hoping. Nevada had Nevada passed a law about like employers cannot restrict their employees from smoking pot because it's legal in the state. 
but it's like because a lot of employers apparently were saying like no you can't do it even though it's legal here we can still fire you so the state of Nevada actually took steps to say like no we, we legalized it here you cannot fire people for this interesting so they so apparently as of January 1st 2020 unless you work in a job that has like physical implications where being high would significantly impair your job or something like that you cannot restrict your employees from smoking pot uh, I, I i don't know who that impacts does it what if, what if your employer is national or international is that okay I, I don't know i heard from a friend of mine that works with a uh, caesar's entertainment that they became the first uh, company to uh instantly Instantly. <laughs> I think that friend of yours is, is my wife. She, yeah, she said it immediately. <laughs> She's like, they just sent out a notice and they were like, yep, you're good. <laughs> Go ahead and do it if you want. You ain't getting fired here. And that, but that's so progressive. I fucking love that. I fucking love, I, I used to work for Caesars. It was always a great company. I love the fact that their first thing was like, yes, the state legalized it. We thought, look, if the people of Nevada want you to be able to do this, then go ahead and do it. It is not the worst drug. We're sitting here drinking beer, and I am the number one proponent in the world for beer, but I am like 90% certain that marijuana is healthier than beer. By far. I mean, it's just... It's, we, t- we talked about Penny earlier, so of course she's not smoking weed, but CBD? Penny's been taking CBD for a while now, and it is absolutely the incredible, the impact it's had on her. Like the most high anxiety dog you've ever met, even when she came out of her shell as much as she did, she is a whole different beast. Just giving her a small dose of CBD every day. It absolutely blew my mind. I've heard that from so many people about CBD. Like it's, it's incredible. Like it's, it's like a godsend. And, but the fact that it hasn't been tested by the FDA, the fact that it hasn't been like approved by the government, Why is it pot? Is it, yeah, right. Got to have some, some hands in the pot, right? Yep. And as soon as they figure out how to make a little bit word. more, yeah, as soon as they can make a little bit more money on it, as soon as Big Pharma can capitalize on it, like they are sure. marijuana right now. Sure. Watch what happens. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a sad state of affairs, man. And we've wandered away from <laughs> Yet again. from nuclear proliferation. Well, all right. So we just talked about like the positive aspects of all these other things. Let's, why, don't we, why don't we shift to like the positive parts of nuclear? Let's just say nuclear technology. Okay. Can so let's talk about one thing, just as a preface. Okay. What the fuck? Why can't people say nuclear right? When someone says nuclear, what does that mean? What? People say nuclear Are versus you? nuclear. I say nuclear. I know. Most, like, nuclear is the right way to say it. I, I grew up in Georgia where we know how to say our words right. Well, debatable. Debatable. But, <laughs> but why do some people say, like, a nuclear bomb? What the fuck is a nuclear bomb? I, I think they're... So, so how does it work? Is that what you're asking? Well, is, is there... A... First of all, is nuclear even a thing? All right, so you're, you're talking about massive releases of energy. It's like nuclear fusion. Like that, that's what we're on the brink of accomplishing, right? So nuclear fusion, it's basically how, this, it's how the sun is powered. You have like this in, immensely efficient power source that's damn near like self-sustaining. So... So just just so people can kind of understand this, because this is something that I think I've kind of recently understood better than ever before. So f- so nuclear fusion, which is what the sun does with helium, right? Is, is it a bunch of helium atoms? Mm, hydrogen, all is those it, light, some of those light elements. I'm not really sure. It, basically, the energy and the heat, the heat which creates the energy is just so high that these atoms are slamming together. They're slamming together so hard that they're literally creating new material, which creates a new energy of its own, which creates almost this, to your point, the sustainable energy source, which is the sun. Yeah, so you have like these uh, lighter, a 
atomic nuclei slamming together to combine a heavier atomic nuclei. Okay. And the output of that is vast amounts of energy. Mm. So I, I can't remember what the number is. It's something like one, uh, like one pound or one kilogram of uh, nuclear fusion material is equivalent to like 10 million pounds of fossil fuels. Like mm. that, that's a, like the, the orders of magnitudes of efficiency <laughs> are like, it's pretty unbelievable. So like if you extrapolate that a little bit and think about how, like how small the amount of nuclear fusion it would take to support an entire country rather than fossil fuels. And I, I think it's Germany's like so sometime last year, they were the ones like they created a, um, God, what's the term for it? I don't know, but, but basically like a 25 second, um, God, I, I don't know the term 25 second, uh, like cycle process, mm. whatever of it happening, like nuclear fusion happening, but like how to get it to go ongoing still, it's not quite within our grasp, but mm. it's damn close. And it's really just going to come down. I, I think they, like France, for instance, they've been over 80% nuclear power for decades. Jesus. And like most of the world doesn't know that. We're, we, we in the U.S., we, we've got a ton of nuclear reactors, but it's such a small percentage. And we've got you know, some percentage of wind power and uh, hydro turbines. Like we've got re renewable uh, energy resources, but like nuclear fusion, that, that's it. Because it takes almost nothing to power everything. And it, it's pretty close when our grass. The scary part, though, is if something goes wrong, it's a rat. <laughs> right, right. That's because so <clears throat> so fusion fusion is essentially happening with the Large Hadron Collider, right? That's kind it, of what it's doing, right? CERN like CERN in uh, Switzerland. Yeah, well, and that's part of it. Like CERN's the one defending the Large Hadron Collider, which is sending basically particles around this gigantic cylinder at speeds that are, I think, within like 90% of the speed of light or something Even like that. Even faster. Like pretty damn close to the true speed yeah, of light. It's just, yeah, it's spinning electrons. And it's something, it's like 20 something mile circumference around that thing. It's all underground. It's, in, it's an insane piece of technology and do you know that like they almost they, so they had approved like Cong i think american congress had approved something similar in dallas that was going to be even bigger oh, wow. than the lhc the large hadron collider and it was going to be able to get within like 99.9 percent .9 of the speed of light so it was going to but then people started getting concerned because you know a lot of people are talking about there is an issue with the Large Hadron Collider. They think that it, it could be creating these microscopic black holes. It, it's, Bec not, it's not that they think it, it, it can. Right. Like, if, even though it's a single, like, electrons colliding with another electron, like, I, I don't know what the hell the conditions are, but it can create a black hole. And actually, like, I've met somebody that works on some team within NASA, and I, I don't know if it's Cape Canaveral or elsewhere, but works on the team that is working on developing artificial, or not artificial, but man-made black holes. I don't know why in the hell she's doing it, but that's all she could say. Jesus. She said, like, she wasn't allowed why, to say Why are we doing that, man? I, I don't know, there's gotta be some, like, badass reason for it. Maybe, <laughs> maybe so we can travel back in time uh, a little while to say don't do all the things we've done you know but she couldn't tell me any of the detail this, this is a conversation i had like i think i was in high school so this is probably somewhere between like maybe 12 years ago jesus and like and now she probably could tell you even less <laughs> yeah just, yeah I, I wish i could just like happen to run jesus it. actually this is my cousin's wife's cousin she was a stranger to me but like there's a path to get back to her i might have to go hmm Go knock on our door again. Good lord. Man-made black holes has an entire division. That, like, I get that. I, I get that there is a need to study it, but the desire to create it. And, and I, I, don't know if, I don't know if that's what they're doing. I know the LHC is. Like, there was, a, there was an article that came out in, I think, the Scientific American or, or some scientific journal that talked about, like, the LHC is essentially a black hole factory. 
And that's all they're like, they said, I mean, it's, it's a crazy number. They said something like for every minute that the LHC is running, it is creating like a thousand black holes. And it's basically been running nonstop since like 1996 or something like that. Jesus. So like, and so there's, and this is where like, I need you to keep me in check a little bit. But, um, but the, the theory, the reason CERN thinks that it's fine is because for microscopic black holes, they'll burn themselves out essentially because of Hawking radiation. Yep. Because that, because the theory is that it will give away enough energy that it will just dissipate. But if it ever didn't, if it ever gained enough energy for some reason, if it ever gained enough mass, then it wouldn't go away. And then we'd be fucked. But like, like what's, what's that critical threshold? Like what's how much mass to where it right. won't dissipate virtually instantly? And no one apparently has still proven that Hawking radiation is real. I thought that got proved right after he died. I, maybe. I, I, look, I, I am not I the expert. I think it was like gravitational waves were actually observed somehow. And I don't know. I, I may be wrong, but I have no idea. The, I think the story that I read may have been dated. I, I, it could have been dated, but they said that Hawking radiation still hasn't been entirely proven. And so the idea that these black holes are just going to dissipate all every time is still not to- It's still kind of theoretical. So there's another thing too, but you know what? We'll save that for another, t- another time. We're going to take a quick break. Um, and we're going to come back with a third beer uh, just to close this out because Blaine and I are going to have a third beer anyway. Um, so we'll be right back. All right. So just so you guys know, we're, we're literally sitting in my garage in, uh, in the middle of August in Las Vegas. It's fucking, it's probably it's still be over a hundred degrees in here. It's probably like, it feels a little bit like a sauna. It's like dry it's, heat. It's what everyone says. <laughs> I mean, you're from Georgia. You 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 know, uh, uh, I'll humid. Take, I'll take 105 in Vegas over 80 in Georgia, any given day of the year. It ain't it ain't bad. It ain't bad. But we're also sitting in here, surrounded by dogs. Uh, Blaine's dog being like this badass pit bull uh, that he already told you a little bit about. And then I've got like my little Chihuahua. But the funny thing is, they get along really well. They it's awesome. Love each other. It's awesome. They've known each other as long as we've known each other. It's fantastic. Oh, yeah. I think she came over that very first day I went to your house, didn't she? Yeah, you also brought a snake over that day, I think. Oh, yeah. That's when I picked up Earl. Jesus Christ. And <laughs> snakes and spiders, man. That's like no bueno. I, I, I don't want it. I don't want it. Earl, Earl was about 9 feet, 40 pounds. He was a big old boy. So he, he had every reason to be uh, a little scared. Not not down for that, not uh, not my thing. But that's okay. All right, so we're we're heading into the home stretch. Um, we talked about nu- nuclear proliferation. Proliferation. <laughs> Jesus Christ! See, this is what happens when you have a beer show with a science show. We're You're all trying to move on before you have a, over another beer, though. Well, right. So I, I just want to lay the groundwork before we crank <laughs> back our third beer. Uh, so. We've covered a little bit of ground on nuclear proliferation. We've talked a little bit about some of the shit that happened in the 80s and some of the shit that's happened recently. Fucking four people have died, apparently, recently, which is just fucking terrifying because I think a lot of people are like, God, I thought we were past this. Yeah, what's next? We're not. We're not. We're not fucking past this. Nuclear tensions are just rising again. And, you know... You know I was in a, like... After all that, nor- all those North Korea scares, like right around election oh, time. Oh Jesus Christ! That whole like that Hawaii thing. Yeah, that was scary. Jesus, dude, I was in South Korea the oh, day of the meeting God. of that first meeting, and it was crazy because there's just like swarms of people around every TV. Because I think, were they happy? Like were they were the South? No, I, I think. I, well, I, I I don't know, but like if they were feeling like I felt, I was sitting there watching TV, being like. Is this all just a ploy? Like, is North Korea or are they about to come fuck? over the border and I'm I'm 
just wrong place, wrong You're just time, and who the hell knows what just, happened after that? Just to provide context from what we're talking about, this was the day that North Korea and South Korea finally spoke again on like political terms, right? This is what we're talking about. And you happen to be abroad. In that place, was it in Seoul or where? Yeah. Where, yeah. Jesus. Yeah, I was downtown. And you were there. And you happened to I be there. I was only there for a day. <laughs> it happened to be that day. And, and so, yeah, I mean, the whole world, I think, was watching. I mean, they hadn't yeah. spoken since when? Like, I mean, the 50s, 60s? I don't know, man. Crazy. Jeez. Well, you're alive. You made it. Yeah. You so, made did, it. so did everybody else. So, so did everybody Victory. else. All right, so uh, so we've talked about nuclear proliferation. We're gonna we're gonna wrap it up. We're gonna we're gonna get to the finish here. Um, Blaine and I are just gonna talk about a couple more things, but we're gonna finish this off with one more beer. We're cranking back three bitches. So we're, um, we're looking super girly with this one. Huh? Well, yeah, you know, it's a, it's a it's a it's an attractive woman at least. Uh, so this is another local brewery. It's actually a relatively recent one that opened uh, called Love Lady, down on Water Street. In Henderson. So if, if you're a Vegas local or a Henderson local, you're probably familiar. It's called Love Lady. This place is pretty cool. Um, this, this little street down in the middle of Henderson, it's like, it's this, it's this place that you know is going to be cool soon, but like it's not quite there yet. So they're working on it. Like, you know, main, when you think of Main Street America, you think about these cars, like, diagonally parked in these parking spaces. And you walk from place to place. And you go and you get a burger and then you grab a beer and uh, you just have a blast. And it's like one little drag that you can walk from place to place. That's what Water Street is. And fucking Love Lady just opened up there a couple of years ago and really started to bring life back to this spot. Because before, it was kind of a lot of shitty little businesses that weren't really like things that you wanted to walk around to. So excited to see um, because I think Henderson's going the right way. Anyway, so Love Lady, it, they, one, of their, one of their better beers, and I, I'm going to say I fucking hate sours. I fucking hate sours. <laughs> um, but this was one of the first sours that I ever had that I was like, yeah, it's, it's not bad. I'm kind of I'm kind of curious. I've never ordered a sour. I've tasted them, but no, I can count on one one hand how many times I've tasted them. So I'm curious about this one. I think like 99 out of 100 times they're awful. That's prove me wrong, America. Please, like, let me know. But like, this is the hundred. All right, so we're gonna crack it. It's called Ninth Island Pineapple Sour. It's pineapple. Cheers, man. Number three. Do you open your your tab all the way? I do. I try to. See, I, I barely open mine because then you always know which one's yours. It's like everybody always opens it all the way, but I can always recognize mine. In a you know, so the, another way, like, do you ever do this? Like, you, yeah, but so does everybody else. Yeah, but not that, everybody that's, does. That's pretty normal. It helps the flow. Nobody does that. All right. So you like barely crack it, but then your drinking experience is awful. Well, who finished their last beer first? It doesn't mean you enjoyed it. Oh, sip number one. Oh. All right. What's your face? What's your face saying? I, I puckered up a little bit. Um, I've never liked... I've never liked sours. And? Uh, I'm, I'm going to try. Yeah. Because you know what? Like, I grew up and growing up in the South, right? Uh, I never liked whiskey or any dark liquors for that matter. What did you drink? Vodka. But it was only because, like, the people around me drink it not, like I wasn't much of a drinker drink. yeah, yeah. like even in college not much of a drinker and did, just didn't really care to so I just had what everybody around me did uh, and then fast forward several years later what am I like 23 24 something like that and I remember sitting in a bar in New Jersey and somebody says how did you grow up in the south and you don't drink whiskey it's like you know what you're right mm. change that change you were that. shamed you were shamed into drinking whiskey and I want to thank him for doing that but maybe that's what I need for these sours. Do you like whiskey, bourbon, or scotch? Scotch. No shit. No. Really? Scotch, scotch on the rocks. Well, if it's something nice, no, not not on the rocks. We're not going to dilute it and pollute it. Mm. Um, but if it's just a mediocre one, then yeah, on the, on rocks. the rocks. Okay. I got my one glass I drink it out of. Always the same one. What's uh, What's special about that glass? Um, it's not glass, it's plastic, and I found it on a river bank next to the Colorado River a few years ago. Okay, so I feel like there's a story. 
There really you, be- you better just tell the damn story now. There, there's not much of a story. It's like there's some hot springs that uh, I've frequented quite a few times, and you walk a few minutes down from the hot springs, and you can jump the Colorado River because it's only like 55, 60 degrees that time of year. And I walked up. I was like, hmm, look at that green cup. That's kind of cool. So I put it in my pocket, and that's green, my drinking cup now. A green plastic cup. Can't break it. It's made by Coleman. Does it look good? No. It- <laughs> And Coleman, you're welcome for the advertising. Does it look good? Nope. We ain't worried about that. It blends in. But it does the job. Blends in, does the job. <laughs> and I was probably the only person that would have picked it up anyway. <laughs> yeah, I've been, I've been drinking out of that probably two, three years now. I, b- I bet there was a dude who was like down the beach, like like just kicking it on like a tube. And he's like, he came back half hour later. Where's my fucking Coleman cup? <laughs> <laughs> it's living a great life. <laughs> At least he can know that. <laughs> I hope he knows that now. But yeah, um, sours. Maybe I need to be shamed into them. No, you don't. Trust me. Uh, again, oh God, thank 99 you. out of 100 are awful. This one, I'll, I'll give it to Love Lady. And, and actually, Love Lady makes a lot of other beers that I, I'm a huge fan of, by the way. They've got a, uh, a New England style. Cha- it, it changed my boss's mind. My boss and I used to get in fucking arguments about beer. He drinks the shittiest beer. That's what I... Because, okay, so again, Blaine and I used to work together. He knows who I'm talking about. He, like, not to throw fucking Michelob Ultra under the bus, but that was like his beer. Like, that was his beer. Like, that's the good beer. Yeah, you walk into, like, like this beautiful house, and he's got this really cool ke- kegerator that... There's no way he built that. He bought that. Oh, yeah. And, and, but this cool kegerator sitting there, and it's like, oh, cool, what kind of interesting beer do we have in here? He's like, oh, there's Michelob Ultra. Uh, I'll, I'm gonna run to the store real quick. Yeah, we're all gonna lose weight tonight. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. But but so Love Lady literally turned him on to IPAs through the New England style. So fucking good for you, uh, Love Lady. You taught him that IPAs can be fantastic. Well done. The pineapple sour. Uh, you know, if I was grading against other uh, sours. I'd give you a fucking A+. This is like one of the best sours I've ever had. In general, as, a, as, a, as someone who is not probably much of a sour fan, meh. Meh. But now that I'm half a can in, it's, it's, it's growing on me. You drink three of them, you'll, you'll, you'll love them. Not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, let's wrap this up about nuclear proliferation. You so got I don't it. fucking mispronounce it again. God, that's a, that's a tough word. That's a, a tough, that's a lot of syllables. It's a lot of like hard syllables. Like, yeah. Anyway, so a lot of negatives. What we didn't talk about is a lot of the positives. I know you were trying to get into that when I started fucking talking about fusion and fission and all that shit. So there's some good things. Plenty. What, what is your vision in the way that nuclear power and nuclear basically uh, mechanisms can work in the future? To, for, for good or for bad? Like, what what should we do and what's probably going to happen? So, should I answer that, like, with the blinders on looking at nuclear technology or should I say what should happen? Well, I want you to do both. What I want you to do is, what I want you to say is, <clears throat> what should we do? Like, what should we do with nuclear power? But I also want you to say, like, based on the trajectory of what you're seeing, what's going to happen with nuclear power? So there's, uh, that's two nu- different questions. Nuclear power, just traditional nuclear reactors, have been and will continue to to grow. Like they're fueling more and more of our our energy needs all around the globe, and that that's going to continue. I, I feel pretty confident saying that. I think when we took a pause, you were talking. I don't I don't remember if we were recording at this point, but you said like France runs on like eighty percent nuclear power. Yeah, and that that was true. Like. At the turn of the millennium, that's that's it's been, insane. Yeah, they've been predominantly nuclear power. Uh, it's I, incredible. I think I think they're still the world leader. Um, I might be wrong at this point, but they've they've been hardcore on it for a long time. Yeah. So so you've got that. I mean, and so there's clearly benefits, right? Like this whole idea of like fucking clean coal and like shit like that. It's like it's not relax, stop. That's we want to keep people jobs, but there's plenty of jobs in the clean energy market. We just need to find a way to fucking transition some shit, right? Yeah, and, and there, there is inherent risk. We know we know that, but sure. that's 
that's a that's part of our reality now as technology continues to evolve it doesn't matter whether we're talking about cars or smart homes or whatever else there's an inherent risk in everything we are going to pursue oh we'll cover ai in future episodes trust me i know ai is coming but like so we we as a people got to decide like what level of risk are we willing to take on sure and that's and and that's absolutely true. And so, he, so one of my favorite quotes from Neil deGrasse Tyson goes back to like when a lot of people say like, "Well, why are we exploring the stars? Why are we exploring AI? Why are we exploring all these technologies when we have all of these people on the streets? When we have all these homeless people? When we have all these problems that we need to solve domestically?" Don't worry about Mars. We gotta we gotta solve the United States, and and that's a fair provocation. It's a uh, there's a lot of things that we need to work on. By the way, like I don't know if you heard this this whole thing about like the city of Oakland passed these new city ordinances where you can't use gender specific terminology for these standard. Um, I don't even know what to call them, but like but these things. So I mean, the worst example, right? You know what a manhole is. Oh no! Like a fucking sewer cover, right? They're gonna change the name of that. You can't call it a manhole anymore Christ. in Oakland. Um, if Oakland wasn't horrible enough already, it just got that much worse. And and and, and there were like I think there were like forty or fifty words that they identified, like manpower. You can't say manpower. It's got to be workforce now. Some of them are like, all right, what? Fine, fine. I, I so, get it. So what? They're like, we don't. We, not only do we have like. A zillion gang murders per day. <laughs> now we're going to make you hate us that much more for a different reason. Look, I, I, I'm not going to speak for you. I know you feel this this way too. Like there is plenty of legitimacy to like gender, um, you know, uh, equality. We need to find a way to allow uh, gender equality. Like th- there are a lot of things. There's a lot of things. I could, like I could I could tell you a long story that uh, that my wife had to deal with recently, but I'm not I'm not going to get into that. But what we don't need to fucking focus on, we all have a limited amount of time and resources to focus on problems. Manhole is not a good word. It's not like it's not like f- women are sitting there thinking like fuck I'm missing out on the word manhole. I wish I could be associated with the word manhole. That's not helpful for the fucking female gender. Like like yeah, if we were sitting there like if the if if the word currency had the word man in it, like okay, maybe we should find a way to get the word man out of currency because that's like money that moves things around. This is the fucking blocker. How bored is that senator? To like, be per- pursuing this shit, and, and I gotta give I gotta give props to uh, Mario Lopez. Uh, by the way, Saved by the Bell, one of my best favorite shows of all time. Never seen it. Uh, get the fuck out of here. Never seen it. I don't think you're allowed back in this house. You're gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna make you like fucking stream it. Star it's, Wars, it's gotta be. Lord of the Rings, Indiana Jones. I ain't, I ain't seen none of it. Are you? I grew a up human? outside. I grew up outside. On a Are farm. you a human? Jesus Christ! You want to learn how to catch salamanders and crawdads? I, I didn't want to get mad at you at the end of this show. Like I, I just, I didn't. Anyway, still time. we'll go past this. All right, we'll just we'll move on and we'll we'll deal with this later. Mario Lopez, I think he as soon as he saw some of this stuff, he, um, it's AC Slater in Saved by the Bell, by the way. But he tweeted like, "Hey, um, maybe you should solve your homeless problem first and then deal with this terminology later." <laughs> and it's like, I mean. She got all kinds of shit for that too, right? Oh, I'm sure he did. I'm sure he got shit for it. I mean, but God, like, again, I'm all for gender equality. I think there's a lot of work we got to do, but I don't think changing the terminology of manhole is the first thing we need to tackle. There's plenty of other things we could look at before we get to that one. So, um, fuck, I don't even remember what we were talking about before that. We have to figure out, like, what's the answer? What's the future? Uh, yeah. We... <laughs> can, can the conspiracy theorist part of me come out for this answer? I would love for the conspiracy theorist in you God, to talk. Love, the older I get, the more I love conspiracy theory. I, 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 I'm excited to hear it because I don't think you tell me a lot of your conspiracy theories. I, most of them aren't theories. Like, it, it, it's a damn fact. But 
you know, if we like, if we rewind to Nikola Tesla, sure. probably one of the most like, probably one of the smartest people in human history, mm-hmm. killed by our government. Was he? Oh yeah. And then like once they killed him, they stole all his shit out How of the safe was he? in the hotel. I I can't remember. Yeah. But they was get. He, they was he like, like an old man though? Was it, or was he like prime of his life? Like he he he, he was still cranking shit out. Jeez. Like he would, he was he, he had figured out like self-sustaining energy like drawing from the earth which this yeah, goes back to the theory yeah. of why the egyptian pyramids were built right it was a power plant mm. and what nikola tesla was working on was very synonymous with a, what a lot of people think the pyramids are for but you know go do your own research I, I'm, I'm... <laughs> but you can't just leave people hanging you got to give them at least give them a 15 second sound bite on like what what are you talking about? What's the what's the what's the power plant? I, I don't really get it, but it, it's basically drawing energy from the earth, and it's it's a self sustaining power plant. So you're creating no there's no negative out uh, offput of it. You're creating energy, hmm. um, kind of. But like to to believe in that, you also have to believe that the Egyptian pyramids are more than a few thousand years old because you go talk to any archaeologist, you look at uh, the the wear down in the, in the rock that on like the Sphinx, for instance, mm-hmm. and everyone are going to suggest that that is 20,000 years old, not just a few Jesus. thousand years old. So that gets into this whole other like uh, theory on, on human existence and how our technology evolved and then devolved, maybe what we're on our way to wiping ourselves out a second time. Well, that's what this whole podcast is about. <laughs> More like, look. But all, all I'm getting at is you look at Tesla, you look at there's in, I think it was 1944, the Japanese came out with an electric car that could get over 300 miles a gallon. There's there's the guy somewhere. Is that why we nuked him? <laughs> Fuck, man. That, that's a sensitive subject. <laughs> Jesus. Anyway. I'll tell you about my story when I visited Hiroshima one of these days. Um, <clears throat> there was some guy that created like the you know the the uh, water the water powered vehicle. There were the MIT students that created they they did like a two thousand dollar modification on a Prius and then like uh, like mul- multiple factor increase in total mileage it could get. Mm. Like there's all these technologies that quote unquote are suppressed by our government because it helps keep uh, the, the fossil fuel businesses in which mm. is our that's what fuels the wars which creates all this money which creates all these tensions and economics and whatever else but it's all these suppressed technologies that there's way way too much evidence of Jesus and you know secret societies uh, whether you call it a society or a government they go back you can find record of that in the earliest recorded parts of, of human civilization so why in the hell wouldn't it exist now? Yeah. yeah. But there's just the comp- conspiracy theorist part of me. So who, who knows? I could be just blowing smoke up your ass. But no. my personal belief, we let all these technologies that actually exist come to life. We replaced the Department of Defense with companies like Blue Origin and SpaceX. And we replace, mm. we replace everything that's run by the government with either private or public enterprise, something not run by the government, mm. and watch how the evolution just explodes. But, I mean, uh, I, I don't disagree with you. I mean, I think that there is a very good chance that government suppression has happened. I think there's a very good chance that we are stuck in a loop based on people trying to change, like create economies for themselves but what I what I would disagree with you on is if you're talking about giving all of the power then to SpaceX well the same thing is going to happen again I'm not saying give them the power I'm saying let a capitalist economy sure go for it democratize the power that I would agree with yes that I would absolutely agree with I think as soon as you leave the power in the hands of one person or one department or one agency or one, th- like, and that's what you expect to run everything, that's when you run into problems. Yeah, but look at, we already have proof in, like, it takes NASA, what, $2 billion 
uh, to to put something in space versus SpaceX can do it for thirty million. But you, this is where you and I had a had an argument. I think what two weeks ago, where like the SpaceX has levied the technology of NASA. I'm not saying SpaceX couldn't have figured a lot of this shit out on their own, but like, but the idea that NASA hasn't served a purpose along the way. So yeah, so like now, NASA is full of bureaucracy and red tape, and they probably pay twenty dollars for a part that should actually cost them two, and there's a lot of fucking contracts in place that are just awful, but it doesn't mean that they didn't serve a purpose, and here's why, is because NASA does not have an ROI requirement, yeah, and wow. you need that. Wow. You need. Buster served a purpose, and Sears served a purpose. Well, but the, but those but those are the, those are stores that were meant to drive revenue. NASA never was never they, required to drive they, revenue. Yeah, but they didn't evolve properly. They didn't evolve in the way they needed right. to to fulfill the na- the needs they needed to fulfill. Absolutely. That, that, that's why I bring it up. Uh, fair, fair. So so your point then is that NASA has not evolved with the requirements of the new technology that's available. Yeah, because they didn't have the, like, the ROIs, the, the KPIs that any other business has to mm. be mindful of. Mm. They just got to cruise along. Right. Okay. All right. I liked Blaine's corner of conspiracy theory. That actually might be my favorite part of the show. I might have to call you, like even if you're not here, just to get like a five-minute conspiracy theory I will make enemies with some of my uh, personal <laughs> beliefs on what has and hasn't happened <laughs> I'm happy to share them alright but we gotta wrap this up because we're coming up on an hour and 15 I was planning on this Damn. being like 30 to an hour um, okay so nuclear proliferation <laughs> Jesus Christ nuclear proliferation Foration. Foration. alright here MP. we are MP. so Problems are countries and organizations that don't understand the requirements and don't understand the power. And I shouldn't even say, well, I guess the evaluation stands true, but I think a lot of people sometimes think like, oh, the U.S., well, we're, we're reliable and trustworthy when it comes to nuclear weapons. But I have no doubt that we have some of the same shit in place that we talked about earlier with the cold hand or dead hand with Russia. We, I'm sure we do. And you know what? It, it's, uh, it, it's a shame. Look, I, I, I'm not in favor of just letting the United States fall, but should we just wipe the rest of the world off the face of the earth if we ever did? Is that fair? Hell no. <laughs> I mean, that's... Again, we need defensive protocols in place, but like that's not. It's like there was this um, there was this economic study done, where it was like, um, uh, fuck, what was it? It was like there was ten dollars on the table. They did this like study between research subjects, and they had ten dollars on the table, and they had two people like the way that we're sitting across the table from each other, just two people, and they would they had five or ten one dollar bills. And they said, you guys need to divide this up between yourselves. And you need to agree upon it. If you don't agree, no one gets anything. But if you do agree, then you'll get whatever you guys agree upon. And so anytime anyone was more greedy and they said, I want $9 and you get $1, then... Obviously, the person who was getting the $1 said, I disagree. I don't want this. But the economic model, the weird thing was, they were like, here's the weird thing. Now you're talking about justice and fairness, not just pure economics. Because you walked into this study and you had $0. So regardless, you're walking away with $1. But... You're mad because now you're not getting four extra dollars. So you're mad at this person. So you so now you're you're saying no one's getting anything. <laughs> Rather than you could still walk away with one dollar, but now you're saying you're mad about the justice and you're saying no one's getting any dollars. <laughs> and that happened like 90% of the time. 
anytime someone else wanted a different amount. And I think they planted people in those, because I think most people would just say like, yeah, five and five, cool, right on. But I think they planted people in there to say like, I want nine. And you can have one. See, and if you use that as an analogy of like first world countries versus third world, I, a big part of me believes ultimately Yeah, I'm, I'm tempted to say that the world's not going to outlive me. And whether... You might be right, man. If you look at all these powerhouses around the planet, they're going to... Somebody's inevitably going to attempt to destroy the other. But what's left is all these third part Or third party... Third world countries. And they're the ones that have been on, on losing into the stick on a, a lot of economic deals throughout human history they're the ones that were going to just take the one dollar and that would be that yeah but after all these first world countries destroy one another they're the ones that know how to farm they're the ones that know how to hunt they're the ones that know how to live off the land Mm -hmm. and the evolution starts over it starts probably with the people who know functionally how to do things uh, that actually make them survive yeah it's, it's very true. I mean, it's it's very true. I think we got to close this out. Yeah, I'm about out of beer. Yeah. We're going to go get probably more beer. You guys don't get to join us for that one. But, um, but Blaine, thank you for joining me on our first ever podcast. This may not actually be the first one to air because it may be like... It, I think the sound quality might suck. So we may like air this like number five and be like... Yeah, remember when we were like at our grassroots? Still practicing. Yeah. Before we were on the 50th floor. Yeah, before we were like fucking just the the big shots, the big shots in the in the podcast world, which I'm sure will be very soon. Maybe. All right, man. Well, thanks for coming, and uh, folks, we'll see you next time. Peace.